Okay, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to uh, update PowerPoint content um, from Excel. So I have this simple uh, sample PowerPoint presentation um, with values that I want to um, use values that I have in Excel to update uh, on an ongoing basis. Um, so what I want to do is there's basically four values I need for each or four things I need to know for each uh, um, value I'm going to update in Excel, or in PowerPoint. So those four things are, first of all, what slide, um, I'll call it slide index that it's on. Oops. I'm also going to need to know the shape, name, that uh, PowerPoint sees it as, the value of that shape, and then I also am going to define a friendly name that we're going to give uh, to that shape, which will help us know um, what to update it as. So, um, I'm going to open Visual Basic or do Alt F11. Okay, the first thing I need to do is go to my references and add in uh, my Microsoft, where is it? Microsoft PowerPoint library. This will allow us to control PowerPoint from this. Excel. So I want to add a module. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, define a couple things that will help us. So I'm going to define um, PP app as a PowerPoint application. I'm also going to define uh, PP Prez as a PowerPoint uh, presentation. So we can define those in our subroutines and save some time typing. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get, uh, we're going to make a subroutine that we'll be able to click a button and uh, after we've clicked on a shape on PowerPoint and it will basically pull the values into here for us to help us so that way we can then end up writing them back to the PowerPoint file. So uh, the first thing I want to do is for the subroutine, I want to set my PowerPoint app equal to and I want to get the object of um, PowerPoint application. So this is going to grab hold of the uh, PowerPoint application that's already open. Something. Then I want to set my PP Prez equal to PowerPoint app that application. I'm sorry, not application active presentation. So now I can refer to uh, my uh, PP app to refer to the current application and PP press to refer to the current presentation, active presentation. So I need to define these three values that will refer to the, the slide index, the shape name, and the value um, within this subroutine. So I'm going to real original here. I'm going to do um, shape name, shape slide, and shape text. Actually, she probably should do this in the separate order here. So I go in the same order as ABC, so I'll do slide name and then value. Okay, so now I need to pull these values from PowerPoint. So what I want to do is I want to set my shape slide. So this is my slide index equal to my PowerPoint application, my active window, the view, the slide, and then the slide index. So that will set my uh, shape slide equal to the slide index of the active slide. Now I need to get the shape name is equal to the PowerPoint application, my active window, the selection, the shape range of one because it's my active shape, and I want to grab that as the name. Then I also need to get the text of that um, shape which actually is a text box, but uh, PowerPoint sees them as shapes. So, oops, I want the 
set this equal to PP Prez. I'm doing my PowerPoint presentation. I want to do do the slide, and I need to refer to what slide the shape is on, which I've already defined here. So I'll do grab my shape slide. And then I need to know the name of the shape, which I've already defined here. And I want the text effect and the text value. Now, the other thing I want to do is we have what we call a friendly name. And basically I want this to be a uh, box that prompts us to insert a friendly name. And I want to also have the value of that text appear. So it'll help us um, know exactly what it is that we're adding a friendly name for, and we'll see this in effect later. Uh, then I want to do this as, this is going to put a title on the window, and then my default value that shows up in the input box, I want it to be blank, so I'll just do two quotes. And what do I have here? Oh, I need to end sign. So I want this text and then also that to appear. Okay, then I need to also, oh, up here, I forgot to define this. So when, when we find these values, we want to write them back to this worksheet here. And we want to write them to the next available row. So what we need to do is we need to define what the next available row is so we can refer to it. So I'm going to do my next row is equal to I need to find the very last cell in column A and then go up from there to, and that will find this this right here will find the first cell with a value so then I from the bottom so then from there I want to go down one row so that defines my next available row so in this instance it would be two so, oops. so now that I have those values defined, basically I want to add this data back to, write this data to the sheet. So I'm going to do sheet one range A. I want it to be in column A. Then I want it, the actual row I want it to be on is on my next row. So, and I want that, since it's column A, to be equal to my shape slide. So this is going to write this value of shape slide to A2 in this instance right here. So I'm going to do this for all four. So I'm going to co copy and paste and then just change the um, values of the columns and then the values of the variables. So I want this shape name Text. And then friendly name. So let me save. Let's see. So now we should be able to add a button. shape data and we want to get data for active shape so now I should be able to come over here to PowerPoint and click this and it's asking for a friendly name for a thousand so I want this to be checking account balance well, this is checking balance since I don't know how to spell account oops well, that's a good example. That went ahead and wrote that, so we'll delete that. Then I want to click on this box. We want this to be date. We'll come to the next slide. We want this to be savings. Now, let me show you one one thing that we need to fix here that I know. If we don't have a shape selected and we click this button, we're going to get an error. 
So let's go ahead and correct this because that will happen for some of you. So on this uh, subroutine, we want to define an on error, go to, and then I'll do line one. So down here at the bottom, I'll do line one, which will just uh, come here. And we'll add a message box that says no item selected. Now, we need to, right up here, we need to do a command that says exit sub, because otherwise um, it would just keep going on a normal run and uh, would show a no item selected even though there was one selected if we don't exit the sub on a normal run. So here, now if I come back here, I get a no item selected instead of that error. But if I have the item selected, then it prompts me in here. Okay, so now I have this data. So now what I want to be able to do is change these values and have them right back to Excel. So, or I mean to PowerPoint. So let's go back into Visual Basic and we'll define another routine that will write the information back. Okay, so in this instance, I'm going to define um, C as an object, which I'm going to refer to C as a cell, and I'll, I'll show you how we do this here. Basically, we're going to write a uh, routine that's going to read a whole bunch of cells. So, again, we need to set our PowerPoint application equal to... I just copied and pasted this from the... Let me just do that. Okay. Now, what I want to do is define a range that I'm going to run this routine for. So I want to run this routine for each C or cell or, val or object, really, each object in my range of uh, A2, so I want to start here on A2, then I want to run it through A, and I'm going to use the same thing I used right here, it's letting me know my line's not complete, but basically I'm going to run this routine for every cell in sheet range A2 through A, whatever my last value is, which in this, case, in this case would be 6, because I didn't include the plus 1. I removed the plus 1 that we added uh, right there. I left that off. So it's going to find the last cell with a value. So I'm going to run this routine for each uh, value in that range. So up here, I'm also going to, um, again, let's copy and paste this. Okay. So I need to set my, uh, I need to get my, my values back. Instead of pulling them from PowerPoint, at this point, I'm pulling them from the sheet. So. What I'm going to do is actually, this is my framework I kind of want to use. I'm just going to change stuff around, so I'm going to copy and paste this. So, in this instance, instead of next row, I want it to be equal to my the row of the object I'm currently looking at. So, I'm going to change all the next rows to c.row, C .row. so it's going to pull the value of the row of the object that I'm currently working on. And since I'm doing this for a number of objects, it'll be different depending on which cell I'm actually looking at. Then I want to be I'm going to cut this and switch this around. So instead of writing to 
I'm pulling from. So instead of I'm defining my variables here instead of writing my variables to the worksheet. last thing I need to do is now that I have my variables defined, I need to write them to my presentation. So I'm going to do my active presentation of slides. I need to do, um, I need to index that, this, that the shape is on, that I need the shape name. Then I want to do my text effect, text equal to shape text. Okay. Now, then once that's done, I want to go on to my next cell. So this will sit here and loop through this command for all the cell. So what I will do here is add another button. We'll call this write data. So let's see if this works. Okay, nothing changed, but now if I change this to be Fred and I change my widgets to be 300 and I change my savings account to be two dollars, my checking account to be one dollar, the date to be next day. Then if I write this data, we see all that information change. We see the date change. And you can make these things equal if you don't want to actually type the value, but you want to pull off other data on your worksheet, you can make these formulas. So I can make this equal to now. So that's variable, and um, well, I think you get the idea. So you could set this equal to the sum of, of something, or you're checking a balance. If you had it on a different sheet, you could set it equal to the sum of something. So when you write the data, it's going to include that information. And how you format it will also um, carry over. So if I format this, it should anyway. Uh, let's do it. Not as accounting. So this currency. Of course it didn't. Let's change this to be. How would we do that? So would we make our shape data, our shape text equal here? Instead of just making it equal to value, let's make it equal to text and see if that works. So we're doing our shape text where we're pulling from the sheet equal to, let's see what happens. There we go. So that will include the formatting. So in this instance we'd want it to be, there we go. So that is a very simplistic tutorial, but uh, that kind of gives you the functionality. Um, of how to use Excel to write to PowerPoint.